So I appreciate you taking a minute to speak with me around our private networks forum about some of the, the trends that you're seeing in the market, Yes, And, you know, I wanted to start a lot of the conversations that we're having are around private 5G, but uh, just like with public networks, 4G certainly still very important. So maybe you can give me a bit of a, a snapshot of what you're seeing in the private networks market in terms of when 5G will really be necessary to meet the use cases that enterprise customers are, are trying to implement. Sure, Sean, thank you for your, for your time here. So with, with the applications that 5G brings in, it's, it's very use case specific. So every private network will have to decide which radio access technology is essential based on their use cases uh, and also the spectrum availability as well. So given the situation where 5G is the right choice for certain applications which needs ultra reliable, low latency communication, and also applications that, that, that are very time critical and mission critical. So these applications will definitely need 5G and uh, release 16 from 3GPP offers the complete baseline for these industries to utilize private networks in that fashion. But for applications that do not care about uh, mission critical mission critical requirements are are low latency. These applications can very well do uh, can can do quite well with just the LTE 4G options at this point. So it's all use case specific, and spectrum availability as well plays a role in this choice. So uh, a little different from this 4G versus 5G question, but um, cellular versus Wi-Fi, obviously Wi-Fi, a tremendous success story in enterprises of all sorts, but uh, what are your thoughts on that relationship between cellular and Wi-Fi? Is, uh, is it competitive like some people set it up or is it more of a complementary relationship? Yeah, well, interesting you asked that question. So there's always different theories. Will 5G overtake uh, the, the actual requirements of Wi-Fi and will 5G private networks completely own the, the market and have no room for Wi-Fi? We believe that that's not going to be the case. We believe they both will complement each other quite well. Uh, for instance, uh, it's like food pairing, like wine and cheese. So they both are, are good in their own ways. And it would be it would be hard to say that one would be you know, overtaking the other one. So I, I, we believe that uh, we would have applications that that would do quite well on Wi-Fi and uh, the application on 5G private networks would be completely different. For instance, uh, an example could be in an enterprise situation, uh, all the employees using internet on their laptops and phones, that could be Wi-Fi completely you know, taken over by Wi-Fi. But if the same office or enterprise has uh, applications that require higher throughput, uh, low latency and uh, you know those kind of requirements, then private networks on a 5G you know radio access technology would make total sense. So these two technologies are probably going to coexist. And uh, just like how the 3GPP side, there's so many improvements on uh, the technology front. Even on the Wi-Fi side, there've been several improvements. For instance, Wi-Fi 7 is coming up uh, with so many different and updated modulation schemes. Uh, there are talks of uh, 4096 quad, uh, QAM options, which would make a uh, really, really high throughput. And they also are having very low EVM uh, expected, expected as well for these technologies. So Wi-Fi is also going to stay and uh, they're gonna be complementing each other for a very long time is what we do. So as I look across the market at how big enterprises are choosing to consume private wireless, uh, I'm seeing kind of three maybe simplified delivery models, one being fully private, then this kind of hybrid model where maybe there's a private RAN connected to a public core, and then uh, just a, a virtual slice of the network that's tuned to the enterprise's specific uh, service requirements. So I, I'm curious what you see as some of the pros and cons associated with these different models. Sure, sure. So uh, there's several different options of private networks. As you mentioned, it could be a completely isolated network, which is uh, completely disconnected or detached from a global network operator, from a network operator, for instance. Uh, we also have shared private networks, where a mobile network operator is uh, going to be giving just the RAN component or the radio access network component or the RAN and the control network. Uh, even just have it as a slice of that of that network. So there are different flavors of private networks possible. 
and and the reasons why they are are the options uh, are plenty because everything is use case like Sean. Just like I mentioned in the previous answer, the use case will determine what kind of network is needed. I could see totally uh, a utility company which wants to have a completely private network. Uh, they wouldn't want to do anything with uh, sharing uh, with you know, a mobile operator. I believe they would want to have a complete private network, which is in no way or form connected to the World Wide Web because of security concerns. You know, you could have hacking and all these issues that could uh, totally create issues for that kind of a network. So. Uh, a utility company delivering power, connecting to their grid, uh, they would probably want a totally secluded network, and that type of uh, system would be would be of uh, the first choice. But if it's going to be a factory which is uh, you know needing to have uh, their vehicles connecting to the to their private network in their factory, and then the vehicles could be driving out to the uh, to the other part of town for delivering goods or services. That's when the radio access network option from the mobile network operator is needed. So they could be handover scenarios where the vehicle moves from the factory to the to the global cell and then comes back. So in situations where a mix of both networks are needed, that's when the shared uh, op operation mode would be of uh, would be of use. You know, to that first model of the uh, the purely isolated private network, we're seeing um, a lot of traction in Germany there because they've liberalized access to the 3738 spectrum specific for enterprise users. But I'm curious, just um, what considerations do enterprises that might be thinking about building and managing their own network, what do they need to keep in mind, particularly around test and validation of their systems? Great question, because it kind of gives a segue for me to talk about uh, the Roden Schwartz private 5G network. So we have several factories in Germany, and uh, in one of the cities, uh, Tysnack, uh, we have a factory where we have deployed our own private 5G network. And this is in the 3.7, 3.8 frequency band that you mentioned earlier. Uh, we also have an LTE anchor, just so that we could have a combination of both options there. So. Uh, this this uh, installed and uh, and private network that we have installed is is where we are actually doing our own production for the for the for our systems that we deliver, and we are actually using uh, these these networks to test our solutions as well. So uh, in in the sense we're walking the talk and we're trying to understand uh, how to improve and and gain insights on on the say that, that on the topic of private five G network testing. Uh, so the testing can be 5G coverage, for instance, and capacity, uh, the different configuration options in a real factory. So, so these, these are the areas of focus. And when it comes to testing private networks, uh, again, it's all use case specific. So this is a, a factory that we're, we're using to make our own test and measurement equipment that we could deliver to customers, right? So we have a different set of requirements. But based on the actual needs of a, of a customer who's launching their own private networks, uh, they might need, um, for instance, uh, verifying IP security. That might be an area of focus. Uh, some customers might need to, uh, to check out on interference and, and also try to have spectrum monitoring so that nobody is eating into their spectrum and vice versa. Uh, there may also be requirements of uh, doing uh, spectrum monitoring that I mentioned earlier. Uh, and scanning optimization, benchmarking, and even latency measurements. So there are several different areas where um, measurements are probably needed for private networks. And again, the use case would determine what kind of testing would be required. So Yesh, if you kind of look ahead to the proliferation of these very customized private network deployments that are built to serve very specific use cases associated with different verticals, what does that mean for Rody and Schwartz and how you engage with your customers going forward? Well, uh, it, it's it's a very interesting area because we're going to have a lot more of folks deploying private networks. Uh, they in a sort of a democratization spectrum. So earlier, only the big mobile network operators used to own spectrum, but now the spectrum has been offered for all enterprises to purchase and, and use for their own private network needs. So that is actually helping uh, this business grow in many parts of the world. So it would, it would only bring in more challenges because 
uh, when somebody is launching a private network on, on their own or through an integrator, for instance, they would need to make sure that the network is actually meeting their, their actual requirements and also verify as, as long as their operations are not hurting somebody else in the neighborhood and vice versa. So, so this, is, this is where um, spectrum monitoring would play a very important role. And I think uh, Rode and Schwartz have uh, several solutions to help customers make sure that they can monitor their spectrum and, and, and verify that uh, there's, been, there's been no utilization outside of their spectrum boundaries and, and it also works the other way around. Uh, there's also areas where we want to focus on on uh, on checking for latency. So when it comes to private networks, certain applications, as we discussed earlier, would need really low latency and and very high reliability and very high throughput as well. So we have solutions that would help customers look at the throughput aspect, look at the latency aspect, uh, check out if um, there's everything is going as per the spec specifications that are needed. Um, and the applications as well, as we spoke about earlier, that would also be there, there would be specific applications like uh, for the new verticals, for instance, uh, release 16 is coming up with uh, several new features that are needed. And Roland Schwartz is, is, is highly interested in pursuing these features and delivering them for customers. So we have all these, these test solutions from our side that would hopefully be in, you know, helping customers and, and solving their problems in, re in regards to private 5G networks. Well, yes, I appreciate you taking the time to share your perspective with me and our audience and discuss not only how Rodian Schwartz is using private networks for its own business, but helping drive the technology with its customer base. Thank you so much, Sean. Really appreciate the opportunity here.